Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be going over this interior scene which I made when working for Louis Poulsen. This was one of my favourite projects, still is one of my favourite bodies of work and this interior particularly is one of my favourite interiors. So super excited to share this with you today. We're going to be diving into the lighting, breaking down how I set everything up and really getting into the nitty and gritty of kind of lighting an interior scene and making it realistic. So. This is an extract from Patreon. We then continue to dive into Redshift post effects, the texturing and everything else involved in this scene. So if you want the full deep dive, you can check that out over on Patreon. But today we're gonna to be covering the lighting, which honestly is kind of the majority of the work anyway. So please enjoy and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Okay, so we're in Cinema 4D and this is our lovely scene. This is probably the third attempt of recording this tutorial because this scene does not want to play nice with me. It's pretty heavy. You can see if I go to quick shading lines, some pretty dense geometry. So what I might do when we start diving into this is uh, disable some of the volume builder stuff just to keep things a little bit quicker. Anyway, let's break this down. And I actually want to start this off with a lovely little quick tip for you guys. I want to look at the lighting first, and it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on when you have textures and stuff. I always like to work from a clay scene before I start texturing. So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, for you guys. So all you need to do is go to your render settings, go to effect and material override. And by default, it's gonna be set to custom material, but it's still gonna give you just a clay material, like a 50% gray, which you'll see has updated. But the problem now is that it's, it's also overrode glass and the curtain material, which is obviously where the majority of our light is coming from. So we have this handy exclude include mode here. And what we can basically do is exclude certain materials from being uh, turned into our override material. So let's find the material for the curtain. So I'm just gonna select them, find the material, double click on that, and that should select it down here. So curtains, and we can just drag and drop that in there. And then the next thing is I'm gonna hide them, select my window, let's find the window, here it is, and double click the glass material, find that, and then drop that into the exclude. So now what should happen is the window pane's been excluded, and so are the curtains, so now the light can be let back into the scene. So that's a simple way to override your materials and create a clay render, which I use quite a lot to do before and after shots. So yeah, that's an easy way to set it up and also exclude materials from it as well. Let's dive into the scene. And like I said, I'm just gonna disable some of this volume builder stuff just to keep things a little bit quicker. Um, so you'll have to excuse how this is looking because it's probably gonna look a little bit janky for a little while, but we can fix this at the end. Uh, let's do the same for the walls. So hopefully that'll keep things a little bit lighter. Let's start to break the lighting down. We'll just go into the lights folder and let's start off with the sky and the sun rig. This scene is looking pretty dark just with the sun and the sky rig. And this is something that I come across quite a lot when I'm trying to light interiors with this is that it's pretty hard to get like a really nice soft balanced look with just the sun and sky um, because it tends to be the case that the sun is super intense. Meanwhile, the rest of the room uh, stays pretty dark. So you get this quite high contrast of like bright sun and then dark room, which obviously isn't very good, doesn't look nice. Um, so you have to do some tweaking and some finessing to get it to work. Now, I didn't actually tweak anything in the sky and the sun apart from the sun disk scale, which is now a scale of 30. And if you didn't know, basically the higher the number, the softer the sun is gonna be. So you can see if I set it to one, which is the default, you get these really harsh shadows. You can just continue to increase this until you get the look that you're after. And we set it on 30, which gave us these nice soft shadows and softer lighting while still giving you some directional lighting. So that's our sky and sun obviously doesn't look great. So then what I did is I added this HDR fill layer, which is just a HDRI uh, from PG Skies 1855 to be precise. And you'll see if I enable this, this is gonna fill all those shadows in the scene. So now it looks super bright, um, but we still have that contrast between where the sunlight is hitting and the shaded areas, but now it's just nowhere near as shaded. You can see if I look at the HDR by itself, that it doesn't really have kind of any directional lighting to it. Obviously it's lighting from the left-hand side, so we are getting that contrast, but it's not really casting any shadows. So that's why I'm using this more as a fill light as opposed to 
using it to cast more directional lighting. This is purely just being used to fill those darker areas. And you can see the exposure set super high to five. If I set this to zero, you can see it's a pretty dark HDR. So I just cranked this up until I got it to a level where I felt like it was filling the room, but it wasn't overexposing it. So now when you pair it with the sky and the sun, you see it doesn't really change too much, but now we're getting those lovely shadows come in from the sun. And we're also getting quite a nice bright soft lighting to our scene. Uh, it doesn't look dark and dingy anymore, which is good. Uh, the next couple of lights are area lights and these really are just for kind of like small details and I'm just going to go through them one by one just so you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, so we have this tree light which isn't a tree light at all it's actually for the inside of the, the room and this was to cast some lighting kind of on this stair area here specifically for the plants because you can see if I was to enable the other lights again by the time the sun kind of reaches the right hand side of the room there isn't much lighting going on if I just focus on this region here you can see without this additional area light it's pretty dark in this area I mean we're getting a little bit of light from the lamp shine onto the plants. Um, but if I was to actually disable that, so let's disable that area light as well, you'll see it's looking pretty dark and it kind of falls flat because you're not getting any lighting hit it. So the textures aren't looking that interesting. Um, so I added this additional area light, which you'll see when we enable it and it updates. Uh, it just shines some nice light on the edge of the stairs, but also onto the plants, just to add some more contrast and some shadows. Uh, and just make it a little bit more visually interesting. And this is something I'll, I've started doing more recently with my interiors or kind of any of my shots really, is that it's okay to kind of set up the foundations using physically accurate lighting. So for example, we've used our sun and our sky, we've used a HDR to kind of fill the environment and fill the darker areas, which obviously would be a physically accurate way or realistic way of lighting your scene. But then sometimes you still don't get the look you want. So I'll start adding in additional area lights here and there to kind of paint light in certain areas where I feel like it's needed. And this was one of those situations. So I just got an area light. Uh, it's pretty small with a spread of 0 0.5 and also a temperature of 6,000 Kelvins. Uh, 6,500 is the default. So that would be a completely neutral area light. But I just wanted to put a little bit of warmth in there. So I set it to 6000. And by default, this is going to be set to color. So I just changed it to temperature. And that way you can kind of use that to adjust the, the warmth or coolness of your light. So that was one. I'm just going to rename that plant light. Okay, so the next thing is this backlight. And you can see it's super subtle, like really, does it need to be there? Probably not. But again, it's just like a super small detail where we're getting some light kind of hitting this back wall. And let's see if I can dive out the camera without cinema crashing. Um, and I can actually kind of show you around this scene a little bit. We kind of have this column at the back, like this little hallway. So I just put an area light in here just to shine some light down the back of this hallway and kind of light up the lamp in the back and also just light up the floor and the wall just so again it didn't look so flat and we had a bit more interest in the corner of our render so again super simple just an area light 0 0.4 spread on this because if you set it to one what you're going to see is that it kind of just focuses the light in this immediate area whereas when you kind of start to narrow the spread down it's going to shoot it kind of directly forward as opposed to outwards so it's going to actually hit where the area light is facing. So 0 0.4, temperature set to a neutral color, um, pretty low exposure because obviously I didn't want it to be super bright. I didn't want it to, to distract from the rest of the scene. So you can see once I combine everything else together, you can kind of see how those additional lights are working. So we see this one here, and then we can also see that additional light in the background coming from this area light. So it's quite subtle details, but details that help to paint the picture, add some more interest to the overall image. We then have this exterior HDR, which if I enable this, let's have a look. Yeah, I don't think it's really doing much. I can see, I think it's lighting up the tree on the outside. I think, yeah, I had it to include the tree. So you can see if I zoom out of my world, this is kind of what we have going on. Um, this is the room. We have some trees outside and this exterior HDR is literally just focusing on the trees because the one I had previously, this HDR fill, I don't think that gave us a very nice result. So I set up a different HDR just to include the trees. Um, and also it's worth noting, now I've kind of dived out the camera, 
that I did actually cut out some windows into this building because if I didn't have these, I found that it was even darker in the room and it was just like, it was just too dark and I needed to let some more fill light in. So I cut out some windows on the right hand side and also on the front and that just helps some additional light to enter the room. I think I'm actually gonna do a, another video of like building an interior from scratch because as lovely as these breakdowns are, there's a lot of things that go into like setting this up that it's easier to like show you with hindsight, but in the process of actually building it, I had to like figure out, okay, I need a window at the front. I need windows at the side because it was too dark. But like, that's something I had to figure out as I was building it. Um, it's easy for me to show you it now, but that might be something that when you're building your scene, you're like, oh, why is it not working? Why doesn't it look right? And it's probably because you need to like make some adjustments somewhere that maybe you hadn't thought of. I'm definitely gonna do another video soon on actually building an interior from scratch, especially since you guys really enjoyed the like five hour long one I did. Let me know in the comments if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. And also if there's like a particular type of interior you'd want me to focus on. Let's dive back into the camera. So yeah, that exterior HDR, literally just lighting the trees outside and that is it. So that's all the lighting, daytime lighting. We didn't actually use the nighttime lighting in the end and I didn't really refine it. So um, I won't bother showing you that because it didn't look that great. Um, but yeah, so basically it's a combination of sky, sun, some HDR to fill the darker areas, and then also some additional area lights just to paint some more detail in there. The other thing I wanna talk about, and this actually is quite important, is the Redshift post effects. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and that there was loads packed into this which you can apply to your own work. Like I said, this is one of my favorite interior scenes. Being able to show you the lighting setup for this is really cool because it took some time to really craft it and perfect it. Like I said at the beginning, this is an extract from Patreon. So if you then want to learn more about the Redshift post effects and the texturing and everything else involved in this scene, then you can check that out over on Patreon. Let me know in the comment section down below what you found useful and if you have any questions, thank you again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are in the world, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.